I know what you're thinking. Can't you just tell students that two divided by three is two thirds and be done with it? If that were the case, this would be a really short video. I'm about to walk you through planning an engaging, hands-on lesson for teaching fractions as division so that your students actually walk away understanding the concept. Now, if you aren't familiar with this standard, the standard calls for students to interpret a fraction as division of the numerator by the denominator. While this standard may seem straightforward, there's actually a lot of thinking that goes into students truly understanding it, which means we need to provide them a lot of hands-on experiences. Anytime I am getting ready to teach a new concept, I always go back to my planning map. This planning map walks you through the CRA model. So there is a space on the planning map that really causes you to think through what students' work would look like with this concept in the concrete phase. So when they are working with their hands or using manipulatives, really it is just a hands-on experience. Then the planning map encourages you to think about what would documenting students thinking look like in the representational phase. So that is when they are using drawn models or pictures to represent the math. And lastly, there is a space to get you to think about what this would look like in the abstract phase. So when students are using numbers and symbols, what would fractions as division look like? So let's talk about the concrete phase. So you could use fraction tiles to teach this concept. Y'all know I always love pattern blocks for anything fraction related. And then for this skill, my favorite is actually sticky notes. When we're teaching fractions as division, we use a lot of equal sharing problems. And so sticky notes are just great because it allows students to actually cut up the sticky notes and share them with a group of friends so that they can build their understanding of this concept. So sticky notes, by far my favorite for teaching fractions as division. Now let's look at the representational phase. So this is when students are using pictures to show the math. And so my favorite here is just simple drawn models. They're just drawing the boxes. Maybe they are sharing three cookies with four friends and they're just drawing it out. It's essentially what they're doing with the sticky notes, but now they are just transferring that to a paper and pencil. And lastly, we get to abstract, which is the third phase in the CRA model. And here they are just using numbers and symbols. So they are showing that three divided by four is three fourths. Now, before we get into what this lesson actually looks like for students, before we actually plan what students are going to do when they come into our classroom, it's important for us to take time to consider how we are going to help students make connections between each of the three phases. We don't want students to simply have three different ways or four different ways to solve fractions as division problems, we really want to kind of expand their thinking and guide them to a more sophisticated way of solving it so that they aren't always dependent on sticky notes. We want them to be able to look at a situation where they are dividing three divided by four, or maybe it's 50 divided by nine or nine divided by 50. And we want them to have a more sophisticated way to solve that without needing to draw little boxes every single time. So take time to consider how you will help students make those connections. One thing I really like to do is I like to have students actually work in two phases at the same time. So maybe they are actually using the sticky notes or using the fraction tiles and they are using drawn models to document their thinking. Or another thing that I like to do is when students are working in one phase, so maybe they're working in that representational phase, as they are sharing their work with the class, I will then be documenting it on the board in a different phase, so maybe the abstract phase. And so it's not necessarily that we're expecting them to work in that phase, but we are exposing them to the equation that they are kind of building understanding for. Step two for planning an engaging hands-on lesson for teaching fractions as division is to think about real world situations and choose the numbers that you're going to use very strategically. So we want students to have context. We don't want them to simply look at two divided by three or four divided by five, and we don't want them to just see numbers. We want them to think about what the situation would look like if they were actually encountering it in the real world, because that's really gonna help when we give them manipulatives or sticky notes. It gives them something to visualize so they can actually act it out. Now, don't overthink this. The goal of these word problems is not for a rigorous problem solving experience. It truly is just to give students context. So it can be as simple as three friends share seven cookies. How much does each friend get? In this situation, the challenge isn't the problem itself. 
the challenge or the productive struggle should be the concept. So it should be them exploring fractions in this way. Now we're gonna come back to choosing these real world contexts in just a second because we wanna make sure this is highly engaging for students. But as you are planning out word problems or real world situations where we would be doing this equal sharing type action, I want you to think about different sets of numbers. Now, not all division problems are going to be equally as challenging. So anything with halves and fourths is going to be much easier for students because they have a lot more experience with halves and fourths in their real life. That is going to be easier for students to access in the beginning than a problem where we're working with eighths or twelfths. I've also found that division problems where the dividend is only one more than the divisor is easier for students initially as well because all they're having to do is split one extra at the end between a set number of people. So for example, five divided by four, they could give one to each of four people, which leaves one hole left, and then they split that one hole between four people, which is fourths, so each person would get a fourth, and so that's pretty easy for students to do. So take time and really think about a bunch of different problems and figure out kind of what the progression would be. What are the ones that are going to be easier for students to access and which ones are really going to challenge them and stretch their thinking. If you want a quick differentiation tip, be sure to watch the numberless word problem video because at the end of that video, I share how you can use those problem sets that you just came up with to differentiate and meet the needs of every single student in your class without planning entirely different activities. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, what are students actually going to be doing when they walk in the classroom? Because at this point, we've just done a lot of thought work and a lot of preparing. Honestly, this is what your planning time should look like. We should be spending a considerable amount of time thinking through the concept itself and how students actually understand the concept. What's the progression they go through and how can we structure a lesson so that we are guiding students through that progression and giving them those hands-on experiences that ultimately lead to understanding. So now that we've done all that, we just need to think about what the structure or the theme of the lesson is going to be. Now, anytime you are having students work with their hands, that in and of itself is engaging. So you could have students work in small groups and give them sticky notes and give them four task cards with different equal sharing problems on them and let them work with their table group to cut up the sticky notes and share them out and solve the problems. Students will have great math discussion and they will be exploring this concept in a really authentic way. If you use math journals, I highly recommend having students document their thinking. So that way when you have any whole group discussion, students will be able to look back at a problem and say, oh, this is what we did. If you're looking to jazz it up a little bit or add a little pizzazz to the lesson, you could have a theme for the lesson. And students are essentially doing the exact same thing they were doing if they were just solving it in small groups. So maybe you have a pizzeria theme and you tell students that they are chefs and they're having to figure out how to cut up the pizzas for different parties that are coming in. And so every single real world situation that you've created has a pizza theme. And so again, you put students in small groups you give them these pizza themed word problems, you really, really play it up and they go through and they use their sticky notes or maybe you print out little pictures of pizzas and they do the exact same thing. They are still exploring the concept. We just have that added boost of engagement. Maybe you decide you wanna structure it a little bit different. Maybe you wanna have a mystery theme and you want students up and moving around the room. So maybe you put different equal sharing problems that you've created, you've got your number sets. Maybe you put them at different tables around the room and students have to go with a partner to each table, use their own personal pad of sticky notes. They have to solve it document it in their math journal and go to the next station. And once they've completed all of the station, maybe the answers to each of those make up a code and they have to use that code to unlock something special for the day. I don't know, just something mysterious. Ultimately, the possibilities are endless for how you can actually structure this lesson for students. But the important part is that you've already done the work to ensure that students are building conceptual understanding of this concept. One, because they're going through that CRA model, they're having experiences in a hands-on way with representations and then abstract. But then also you've already planned out how you are going to help students make connections between those things and gradually get to a place of understanding that three divided by four is three fourths. You've taken the time to be intentional about the numbers you are selecting for students 
and you have created real world problems for students to use to visualize the numbers that you're giving them. And so now it's really just the fun part. Be creative, let your imagination run wild with this, and you have a hands-on, highly engaging lesson that will actually lead to students' understanding of fractions as division. I promise if you give students experience modeling and grappling with this concept, understanding will come. I want you to leave a comment below and let me know what math concept is coming up next for you. If you loved this video, I've got a fraction playlist and a math manipulative playlist for you to check out.